Hello everybody, my name is Martin Stocking. I'm the Product Development Manager for TTC Licence Bureau and Business Driver. Now you join me and Chumley the Wonder Dog on one of our walks this morning and we're out on the road today on quite a momentous week because there's been some big changes to the highway code that a lot of people have no idea about. So what we want to do today is we're going to pop back into the comfort and warmth of my office because it's a bit chilly out here today and we're going to go through these with you so that you're not one of these people. I'm going to hit the road to see what I can see. Okay, so now we're back inside. Let's have a look at this new changes to the stuff that's happening in 2022 from a highway code perspective. Now, the first major change is something called a hierarchy of road users. This is really simply summed up in the, what they've really done is they've made it the higher you are up this kind of proverbial road food chain, the more influence you have into how others should really behave towards you. Now, as such, it shouldn't come as much as a great shock to discover then in that case that pedestrians and human beings are right at the very top of this list. These are closely followed by cyclists, followed by people riding horses, motorcyclists, cars and taxis, buses and minibuses, and trucks of all shapes and varieties. Now, the easiest way to try and remember this is really straightforward, and that is the fact that if you are slow, if you're small, or if you're soft, then you have priority over anything that is fast, big, and solid. Now, where it comes into its first real impact on the road is when we look at how we actually cross the road as, as pedestrians. Now, if we look at the old rule for this, now the old rule basically used to say that we would stand on the edge of the curb and we would wait for any car that was turning left to do so. And then we'd make our move and we'd walk past the, past the you know, down the road. Um, working on the new rule though, because obviously we're working on this hierarchy of road users where the pedestrian has a right over the car driver, then what happens then is that now the, the car has to wait for the pedestrian to pass. Now, whether you like this or not, um, and you can see a few drivers not liking this, if I'm honest with you, because in all honesty, there's been talk that it could lead to more rear end shunts happening on the main carriageway. And it gets even more confusing if you then add a car turning right into the mix at the same time as this one's turning left. You know, um, the car turning right could see this and think, well, have I, has the that guy turning left? To stop to let me go or is he letting somebody else cross the road either way whether you like it or not the pedestrian is slow it's small and it's soft so they have to be given the chance to do whatever they're doing now another change is to do with how cyclists act them on the road now technically cyclist position in the road was never mentioned in the old highway code but drivers expected that because they were smaller and slower that they were always going to ride in by the curb. Well, now the new chain says that cyclists can now ride in the center of the lane to make themselves more visible. The easiest way I think that we're going to have to get around this is to just imagine that there's a car a shape around the actual cyclist itself and actually give it in that much room. It's the only way that we're really going to be able to do it. But nonetheless, going back to our hierarchy of road users, well, the cyclist has right over the car. And so they have the right to ride in the middle of the road. So that's how it's going to work. So. This hierarchy of road users, again, as a quick reminder, is really straightforward. If you bear in mind that if you're slow, small and soft, then you have the right to go past anything that's fast, big and solid. Simple as that. So in this situation here where we've got this vehicle waiting to turn left or waiting to turn right or even changing lanes from left to turn right, then technically they have to give way to everything that's in this criteria here. Yeah. Another change that's going to happen is really more going to affect the people riding the trucks, the buses, the cars and the taxis. And that's all to do with the use of the mobile phone. Now, we all know that using the mobile phone is dangerous and we all know that holding it is, is dangerous too whilst you're driving. However, what you are no longer allowed to do is you are no longer allowed to hold your mobile phone for the purposes of using any social media. You can't change a playlist on your, um, on your music. You can't film with them. You can't take photos with them. And you can no longer play games on them while you're driving. But to be honest with you, you place games on the phone while they're driving. So 
Either way, you can't do any more of them. If you get caught doing them, you're looking at a £200 fine and six points on your licence. So what do you do with your hands? Well, now what you do with your hands is another thing that's been brought in, which is something called the Dutch Reach. The Dutch Reach realistically affects these guys here. It affects the cyclists and the motorcyclists massive with something known as dooring, which basically means the cyclist is driving down the road and a car door opens onto it and knocks them clean off. But what the Dutch Reach basically requires you to do is to get into the habit of opening your car door with the opposite hand to what you would normally use. What this does, it forces basically you to turn around and have a look at what's coming, and hopefully then you'll see anything coming, and hopefully if that's a cyclist, you won't door them and knock them off. Um, it also only opens the door about that much as well because you haven't got that much left in the arm movement. So again, it's a really great thing and it's in the highway code for the first time of 2022. So there are just a few changes that's happened to the highway code this year. If you want to find out more about them, if you hold your camera up to this QR code, this will take you through to the License Bureau website where you'll find a much more detailed um, analysis of everything and all the changes that have happened to the highway code in 2020. But hopefully that's helped to put a little bit of clarification around some of the major things for you. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.